and I wonder if you can hear that. I think you can hear that other one. Lucy can. They all have microphones. All right. So I the video previously <laughs> of this one the alcohol link um, stopped recording for some reason and I didn't get me putting the gold and the black hexagon on here no idea why I don't know how it stopped I was streaming it private to YouTube and YouTube for some reason has been cutting us off no idea how or why or when it happens because it, it unless we're live it, it doesn't tell me that it stopped recording on YouTube so I, I don't know so we didn't get to see me doing this but I'll show you the stencil that I use so regular old honeycomb just laid it down and sprayed it black turned it around and did the gold which I love so now I'm going to apply the eyes I made a bigger stencil um, in the previous video it showed me uh, showed me I showed you how to uh, cut this out um, this was a print that I made from a uh, what is it called a drawing from AI I just basically traced a face and uh, traced just the dark parts the parts that I wanted to cut out and use for this particular reason it's a little easier doing a uh, portrait when you have just the dark parts when you when you're practicing painting eyes or noses or hands or whatever you just cut the dark parts out and there you go Another face stencil so I'm going to put these eyes on this board and do some detail and put a little airbrush in there and some colored pencil probably some Posca pens um, I don't know we'll see how it goes but uh, I'm gonna cover up my laptop with some rags because I don't want any of this overspray getting on it or in it. I've got to figure out a way to protect this thing if I'm going to be painting over here like I have been. All right, first things first, I'm going to put some uh, multi purpose spray um, adhesive. This is some decent stuff. Um, it's not like a super 77, like a normal one where it sprays like silly string and it's super sticky and it's, it's pretty industrial stuff, but this is a very fine, it sprays like a regular spray adhesive. You only need a little bit, just a little bit and let it dry for a minute um, or else it will stick to your subject and will not want to come off. So. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this under here and this one under here so I can spray the adhesive on it. Make sure we're not seeing anything. Also, um, man, that would be fun. What if you took this and had a... Uh, sprayed it, flipped it over, put it on your board, and then sprayed it with more uh, more of this, peeled it up, and then you could put like glitter or foil 
I bet that would work. It'd be just like cutting it out of uh, shelf paper, contact paper. But, all right, let's spray this on here. I'm getting sidetracked. That's it. That's all I need. Just a little bit. And I'm going to let this set over here and dry it for just a minute. You definitely want that to dry. I mean, not dry, dry, but just soak into the paper a little. Um, and as you can see, this is a brand new, brand new rag. And I sprayed this um, tonight, this black and this gold. And whenever you're, whenever you do like a mist and you're misting it from dark to light, there's always going to be overspray and it's going to sit there until you wipe it off. Um, so if you're doing resin and you do half white, half black on a, on a canvas and you pour resin on there, that resin is going to pick up that, that black overspray and it's going to look terrible. So all you have to do, is just get a rag and just lightly dust it. Look at that, all that. You're just barely going over this. You're not, you're not really giving any pressure. You're not putting any pressure on it. Go up into the gold, lightly in the gold. You don't want to scratch that gold. As you can see, there's still a little bit. But there you go. You could feel it on there too. Like you don't want that on there, and especially if you're going to be doing uh, putting color and all kinds of stuff down. Your your hands will get overspray on it, and you start touching and getting fingerprints, and that's not good. So we're gonna put this stencil on here. I think I probably left this dry a little bit too long. <laughs> we'll see. And I made a crease around here so I remember where exactly these eyes need to go. I just lightly pushed on the edge of it here to show me right where. Whoops. I don't know if you guys are in the way there. Let's see here. Yeah, that's a little bit over. You can see that stuff is working. All right, so eyebrow here, eyebrow here. I think that'll be good. That's the good thing about hanging a circle. You can hang it any way you want it. Um, but I think this is good. I think we, we got it to the point where it's pretty much centered. I think this will be fine. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna respray this. I don't I don't wanna I don't want a lot of un, under spray that I don't need. Use your tape sound. We're packing up packing up orders from y'all. That we appreciate. That's a, that's the sound of happiness right there. Especially at the end of this week, it does help. <laughs> All right. So you're just gonna lightly tap this because you're, you're not trying to stick it down. It's not like. Yeah, you just want all these little little points to stay. And it's not gonna go anywhere because it's laying down flat and you don't need to worry about that. So I've been doing this in black. Um I'll probably just keep doing it in black. I'll just do it in black 
a little darker and uh, put some like probably some purple in there some teal again the teal looks good on here we'll see all right I'm gonna tip this up I'm gonna tip this so you guys can see this I just want it at a decent angle so that uh, I'm not spraying down and that way you're less likely to drip paint from your spray paint can and the can wants to spray that uh, even spray and always make sure that you tilt you get your little dam here I, I explained why this is in the last video although <laughs> I don't think it recorded that so uh, this is to prevent overspray from going down on your piece here and all this is covered up so we should be good I should be fine just don't spray it there I'm not trying to get it solid I'm just trying to get it to where I can get a nice coverage especially on the eyebrows you know you're not trying to make these super dark because you can always darken them in um, but yeah you can, you can put it dark you can put it light you can finish it you can do this in transparent color if you want you could trace this on here and do it. This is just a faster way. Um, so all you have to do is get the airbrush and do some shadows, put some highlights, add some color, and you'll be all right. You'll be good to go. All right. Just take it off nice and slowly. You don't want to rip your stencil just in case you want to use it again which is always a good deal because if they like it they'll definitely want you to do another one there you go see I like it when that that gold has dropped down and I barely put you can still see that gold in the eyebrows see that that's fun I probably won't even do anything to them up there maybe darken them a little bit through here that's about it This paint dries pretty quick, so I'm not worried about it too much. Um, let's see here. All right, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take this charcoal pencil. I'm going to unplug this sharpener real quick. Because for some reason, you can't sharpen your pencil while it's plugged up. This is an awesome pencil sharpener. I'm not sure who it's by. I just I got it on Amazon. There's not even a oh. I guess there is. Half matte. Uh, it's a super sharpened pencil. Like it gives it a really nice super point. And that was charcoal. Like you ever got a charcoal that sharp? <laughs> All right. that like that's pretty amazing 
Like, let's see, do I have any other just regular sharpen like this? Look at this. That is a typical sharpened, well, this is an eraser, but that's with an, a regular sharpener. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to uh, zoom you in here. I'm just going to fill in some of the stuff, uh, just some of the details with this. Um, I have, yes, I have a blending tool that I like to use too. Um, just for the detail right here. Uh, and then I'll break the airbrush out and do the shadows and the dips and the nose and all that come down into the black. Um, but just, just to give it this detail, it, it's a lot faster and, and, uh, if you're not comfortable getting in really tight with the, uh, airbrush on these little parts here with your, uh, with your eyelashes, then this is, this is good too. Or you can get a paintbrush and, and make those lashes a lot longer. Uh, make these connect all this stuff real lightly. Um, these really aren't black lines, but uh, you definitely want to put some kind of a little grayish line, I guess you could say. All right, so let's just do that. I'm going to turn this light on just a little bit. All right. And I've done this face about three or four times, so um, I kind of know what everything looks like. You could actually probably finish it with just this nib. To kind of give it a some shadow here. Look at that. It just starts off right away. <laughs> um, give you some small eyelash shadows. And that is a that's a little trick that, that I um, figured out. If you take your airbrush or chalk or charcoal and do your eyelash. Do make eyelashes, but make them extra long with just this light stuff. And then you take your black, like your, your solid, and just go right over them. Those first ones become shadows. And it makes it look super nice. There's a lot of black right here, so it's kind of hard to see any shadows. So you might want to... I might have to get those with the uh, airbrush to darken those in. See, this is a little bit easier getting in with these eyelashes. Let me get this little shadow here. <laughs> There's like this little dip here where the eye, corner of the eye, what is that? I'm, I don't know any terms of... <laughs> Of the anatomy I'm self-taught so you guys get um, the lamest terms of all and there's there's a shadow right here where the eyeball and the eye socket meet I believe that's where this guy comes in there's normally, on the photo I use, there's a lot of shadow right here. So, a shadow from the eyelashes 
and the shadow from just where that meets there. And I'll fill that more with, uh, with the airbrush. And fill in little tiny, those little eyelashes up in the front there that go that way and they gradually start going off to the side. This is different, like I haven't, uh, I haven't done a video like this where I'm painting and talking without an audience. I'm normally live when I do this. So hopefully you guys enjoy this rather than me answering questions from people, which I don't mind doing at all because uh, sometimes I do miss questions in uh, in live chat and in uh, comments and stuff, people people like to know. You know, they that's that's the fun part of, of live chat. You get to ask a question and it gets answered right away if it's seen. Sometimes it just goes by a little fast and and we miss it and we miss comments and questions and. I like doing these because a lot of times people don't understand that that there's like a shadow right here and a lot of that shadow is the reflection of your eyelids or your your eye eyelashes or the the actual eyelash and then when you darken that in those get darker then it gets a little shadow here and then man it really brings a nice touch to it all right, so I think that's all I'm going to do with that because the airbrush is going to do a lot more. All right, I need my circle stencil. There we go. Either of those are big enough. So let's get the other one. Also made this one up at Makerspace. Look at that, that's perfect. I'm just gonna give this a light little line there. I don't know if I like that though, so I might, I might bring this, I might bring that down, I might meet, maybe make it bigger, I'll we'll have to do this to the other one too, so we'll see, we'll, we'll put this one up. You know, if we don't like it, we can erase it. That's what I love about charcoal is you can add it as dark as you want normally on some on any surface and it'll Yeah, let's just make this one like this. And you can erase it. So let's do this other eye. <clears throat> Don't have as much detail over here, do I?
and if you're not comfortable doing this line just kind of do dots because uh, it's basically all you need you just need something to kind of give you an idea of where that is and then just take your hand and guide that charcoal not a pleasant sound. You can get that shadow underneath the eye here. excuse me if I'm not talking I kind of get into it and forget that I'm recording <laughs> all right now in this particular one there's she has this little dip and then there's a quick dip and then her, her hair comes in see that you can just kind of lightly you have some uh, charcoal on your hand, you can get that shadow. And then that way you can know where to airbrush that at. This is like a dip. There's a highlight there, and then there's a kind of dark right there. Same with this one over here. So... I think this is good. This is good enough charcoal. If you want, you can give her some loose eyebrows. Normally with eyebrows, I'll take the X-Acto blade, and you can do this with the eyelashes too uh, when you start airbrushing, airbrushing them in, but you can take your X-Acto blade, and normally if your base is white, I've painted this, uh, I think I rolled it with uh, flat white, dead white by PPG, and then sprayed it with uh, some spray gesso. Just sand it with a little 220 then 400 and it's pretty amazing, but see that you scratch and you can get And that's what I normally do also when I do the highlights and these in the in the eyes and the little eyes here if you scratch back down to the white And you get some highlights in here where this uh, eyelid is but look at that. That's great. I didn't even do this to the last ones. I'm not sure if I want to do that to that there. I'll just leave that. Alright, let's fill this eye in. Because I think I'm going to color these. I'll probably do them a, uh, at aqua color. I'm not sure. Yeah, 
let's drop those down. Make this a little bit bigger. in with the airbrush. Not sure if I like that though. Yeah, that'll be fine once I put some color in there. And I like to uh, I like to put the color in the eyes first before you start airbrushing so that when you when you do start airbrushing you can get you can just do a natural shade, natural shadow, and then that goes over the eye. Once you darken this in, then you have some kind of color underneath there so the eyes just aren't blah, like sticking out when you've, uh, if you do this last, which doesn't make sense. Unless you do airbrush, you can put airbrush in there if you like, but a color. I, I like to put a color down and then go from there. So let's see here. This is a uh, Posca pen, aqua green. I'm just going to go right in this part right here. I don't know if I like that. I think I want that more rounded. I love these Posca pins. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna wait till that dries. I'm gonna make, yeah, I used two different ones on there. See, this one goes more circular in, in towards the, the eyeball. off. better eraser here. And then I can come back with a circular template if I want to make this uh, pupil bigger, which I might. I'm not sure if I dig what I did with that. <laughs> oh, that was 
was not dry. That's the good thing about that, is you can always come back and fill stuff in. <laughs> All right. The light is killing me. All right, so I think that's all the detail I want to do with this. Now we get the airbrush out and have some fun. I think I'm going to put it, put a purple on here first, just a light shadow, just all the dips and curves and Stuff. And then add black to that and put all the definition in here. Are you just regular recording that? Um, yeah. I am using my Eclipse, Iwata Eclipse. And I'm going to use, I think that would be too, I think that'd be too similar. Let's put a little, let's go a little darker. We we'll use the transparent dioxane. I don't know, I've never been able to say that word. Put a little bit in there because you don't use a lot, especially when you're just doing some shadows and just adding a little color here and there. Um, I won't be using these yet. I'll get those out when I use the black. All right, I need to prop this up just a little bit. I have an easel over there, but I'm not a fan of using that thing. All right. Let's start with this eye here. And it does not want to come out. Did I not tighten that? Nope. <laughs> Ball else fails. Tighten the chuck. First, I'm going to warm up just a little bit. I always do just a little bit of warm up just to get the old airbrush trigger hand. No matter how long I've been airbrushing, I like to do this just a little bit. It's weird not holding, like normally I hold the airbrush like this, but since this paper, well, the paper might want to stay there. <laughs> Who knows? And I rarely paint at this angle. I'm normally painting up on an easel. Back to the hang of it. Mm 
One of my least favorite lines to pull is up and down. Alright, so like I said, I'm just going to add a little bit of where our typical shadows are. The mysteriously smoky eyes, you know. This little bridge part right here. Right here, come down. I might get one of those templates out. That's all you need. Just need a little bit. Just a little, a little straight edge to make something not so soft and make it, you know, more defined without being so defined. I don't think I did this on my last one. Perfect. And I just like to put a little soft line right here, separate that from that, because that's normally, uh, that's obviously sticking out, so there's going to be light in there, and then um, add a little bit of color, a little bit of a shadow in between, but you definitely want a, a line right there. You're not trying to draw a serious line. You definitely just want some kind of hint. When we come back with the, uh, we'll come over it with a, a uh, white pencil. Make some eyelash shadows. Since those first ones didn't want to show up because of all the paint. You want to watch out when you're using a, a circle stencil, any template, man, just lightly blow in that direction because if not, you'll get a, a little hail, uh, a little rounded overspray. I'd like to get in there closer, but I'm holding this and I'm sitting down and I rarely paint like this, so... <laughs> It's a little awkward painting like this. All right, let's put a little, sh little hard edge right here. And that's what I like about these is you can bend these. These are just made out of uh, poster board. 
and I made it uh, on a laser cutter. out light because you can always go darker <clears throat> gives it that one two punch She's got to have some eyeliner on, so make that a little darker there. You can come in with your white pencil and give it some highlights, or airbrush, or a paint pen, or something. I'll probably do um, a paint pen with a little bit of uh, colored pencil. This is a transparent color, so if you're wondering why it doesn't look like there's really paint getting on there, it's because it's just so, it's so light and everything is so dark right here that you have to layer this. And I probably have my air pressure up too high, so you can see as I keep going over the same spots, it gets darker and darker and more noticeable. See, if I would have been using black, this would have been just completely covered. Like, it wouldn't have looked good at all. A little, little bit up here in the eyebrows. Give it a little something. A little life. I might come back with this stencil this, this hexagon and place it up here just right in these spots and tape off some of these uh, obviously I'll tape off the eye but not like here or like over here and spray it so that the gold is more relevant I think that would look nice like real missed it we'll see and this is where your airbrush comes in and put a little hair there so it kind of gives a little more definition and that's why I love working with transparent colors because they're so forgiving and they just layer and layer and layer and just get darker all right let's do this other one This looks so 80s, but I love it. I like that. I'm just gonna put this in here so that I can get it going. So I come back to it. It's not as hard defining it.
that's what I forgot to do on this guy. That is more of a harder, see like that, just like that. That's why I love these things. I just want just a hint of a line. Give it this guy some. There you go. A little bit, just a little bit. Do the same with this. And there's that little, little dark bone jump right there. <laughs> I know you guys like my... There you go. Boom. Just add a little... Damn, you guys didn't see that. No, you really can't. I just added some tone right there. Alright, so let's... I guess I'm gonna have to. I'm going to bring this purple all the way up here. Bring it a little more dramatic than usual. It's going to look different because I have this a little bit offset, but I don't mind at all.
All right, so let's put some black in here. We're just about out anyway, so it's good. And normally, I wouldn't use black. Which I'm probably not because there's too much black in here anyways. I'm going to use shading gray. Transparent shading gray. This is just... Um, it's a very harsh shading gray, I, sh I should say. You know, like That's the original purple. I'm just going to not fill it up, but I'm going to put enough in there to make a difference. Probably not the way to mix paint, but that's... Yeah, that's a big difference. It's funny because it's still, it's still kind of purple. <laughs> but that's the best way to darken up purple. Just add to the purple, you know, a, a, a nice shading. You don't want to do black because then black will just take over and then it'll get super dark and... This is about the point when, when uh, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get this out. I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. All right. And I'm going to add just some highlights, just a little bit. Um, so that that part is highlighted just enough and then when you do when you start putting the black over it it'll kind of cover it so it'll it'll even give it a better almost like um, there's a little bit of a glow to it like a shine and then you come back in with the pencil and hit it again just in the center you're not trying to do the whole thing again but you want it to be a gradual glisten I guess you could say and then if you want um, I'll probably do this with a paint pen just because this is kind of cosmic kind of uh, spacey I'll probably just go and just dot wherever the the highlight would be the brightest like I'll do the eyeball here I'm just gonna make up a uh, something here you know what I'm gonna dry this first and I have the the saturation turned up on my camera so I'll turn that down here in a minute just so you can kind of see this isn't that bright <laughs> I mean it, it's bright but this looks like he's got pink eye in the video and I'm doing this because that uh, I've saturated that this board with that uh, transparent paint you just put so much and you layer and you layer that that color pencil is not going to want to stay on there and I could if I wanted probably put just a little bit of a matte spray down and let it dry um, that's if you want something to stay <laughs> but um, I'm not really worried about that right now all right it's a little warm but it'll be all right all right, so what I'm going to do is just imagine where that shadow, because the shadow normally is right about here. I'm going to kind of just dot it in. I'll probably put something there, put a little of that transparent so it gives it a shadow, and then I'm going to put that highlight right underneath that. I'm not trying to fill this in like super because sometimes it's really like dark here there might be one over here a little bit and then a small one because really this is just a reflection of what's standing in front of this person you know it's not like a, a real dot unless there's a, a ring light in front of her Give it a little bit of a highlight in here to make this a little bright. Brighten up the eye 
eyes a little bit. And then I'm going to probably put one couple little moist little eye things here because it's normally a little glistening up there. Definitely went over here. And then kind of give this a little bit. This eye eyelid. And then we're going to highlight these eyelashes here. I always tell people, if you don't think it matters, do it. it, it everything matters. And a lot of this is going to get covered up by the dark, but I don't mind. It's still going to be there. You'll still be able to see it. got to kind of color these little guys in just because that's where that there's light coming from down here a little white in here for a highlight and an eyeball and then I love doing this one it separates the lower from the upper and then it gives it you can get that really nice shadow right here. And you can put a shadow or highlight wherever you want it. You know? I feel like I'm, I'm sitting with somebody talking. <laughs> So uh, it's different just talking to nobody, basically. But if you're watching, I appreciate it. And I hope this helps you. It's helped me. And that's the main reason I'm, I do these videos, because I know people out there have just started, you know? And it's difficult. A lot of people don't want to tell you their secrets and how they do it. And our channel isn't about that. Man, if, if you can do it better than me, then, man, more power to you. Just give me a shout out. If I teach you how and you run with it and make it your own, and I know it sounds sappy, but that would help me sleep at night. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do just a little bit of one right here just because I like doing this one. That's fun. We'll bring it a little closer for this one. Let's see how... I'm, I'm really not pushing that hard. I'm just kind of scribbling For one, you really can't get too hard of a edge with this uh, with this pencil because it's not like it's an oil pencil where it will draw on no matter what. This is just a hint, just to just to make it look nice. I always like to try to make those a little different because they are. Especially with the light source, where it's coming from, how it hits your eye.
Actually, I didn't do this to the other eyelashes. This gives it just a hint, and then when you go back over with the black, it kind of covers it up, but it still makes it look like it's just popping off there, so it's not bad at all. Not a bad little tip. That would be my airbrush, if you hear that. There on the other eyebrow, did I? I didn't, so we'll have to do that with this. So weird painting sitting down. Like I'm so not used to this. still transparent so it's gonna layer but it's definitely gonna get darker you'll you'll see the difference that would be my alarm dismiss you know what don't forget to put this on no matter what you're doing <laughs> we've learned a lesson many times So using this, if you wonder what I'm using this for, it gets it to where you can have a nice hard edge, right? Like in the spot like that. Because if you just sit there and do that, chances are that paint's going to come over here and it's not going to leave that little highlight. That looks nice. If you hold it off of your piece just enough, it'll give it a real nice, like a nice little soft line. Even better than if you're just like lightning, lightly airbrushing. See, the black just goes over that white just enough to make a difference. I've got to clean this airbrush out. really long.
you see how the, the black, the uh, shading gray just darkens it in. It just, it just enhances it. It doesn't, it doesn't take it over. It doesn't, it doesn't just paint over it. It just gradually darkens it in. Even when I spray it over that white, it's, it's not covering it. I like it. I'm liking it. All right. So, let's dry it a little bit. Keep forgetting those cans are in back of me there. because it's not going to show up that much more. But it definitely gets you some definition here. Just kind of scribbling in here just to give it some highlight. A couple in here. Give you some of these little divots. Maybe just highlight this little guy just a little bit. And then this one. I, lo I love this the bridge right there. It's always fun. <laughs> And then I'm going to take the Posca pen and just hit little bitty parts where I, I feel like uh, would be super bright. Not anything crazy. See, so you just if you just give that eyelash just a little bit of an outline, like underneath it, it pops it out. It gives it that more little oomph. There's your little highlight there. Just a little bit. Pow, right there. That looks nice. See, you just barely hit that. Barely underneath the eyelash. And it, I mean, it brings it right out. A little bit. 
bit. Give this one a little bit. Sorry if my camera's shaking. It's attached to my bench. I need to figure out some way to not have that. Give some definition to these eyebrows. Just, I'm just barely just hitting them just wherever. Wherever I feel there needs some kind of definition or a highlight or something. Not anything that you need to do. All right, so I'm going to take this. Let's get a little bit different one. I'm going to take this white Posca pen and just hit some of these little highlights. I'm not going to like color them in, and pff, I'm just going to. And this is a good thing about Posca pen is if it's too stark. You can let it set for a second, and you can just kind of damp it, man, and it tones it down. Give you a couple of highlights in here. I always like to put just a dab right here to really make that little eye, eye thing stick out. And I'll just do a dot here, dot here. I mean, it just pops everything out. Even if you want these to stand out in between your eyelashes. Go over that. Man, look at that. You just, they just pop out. It just pops it right out. You put a little dot between these eyelashes and it separates them too. Get that little, get that little highlight right there. Just really pop it out. I like it. Put a shadow, make it a little bit more mysterious, I guess you could say. Need I need the one that's meant for that. There we go. I need to make these longer. Let's see. 
See how that just fits perfect? And I'm gonna just do, you might not think you're putting any color down, but you are. Yeah, it just gives it that little oomph. make it a little bit more mysterious. Darken that up. Darken these eyelashes up a little bit. There you go. I think I do want to I want to outline one of these. We have a couple of these in gold. There goes the tip. First. I'm waiting on this ink to come out. I'm going to lighten this up for you guys, just so you can kind of see the actual color. Put you on full screen. And I'm gonna take some of this saturation out. It's not even up all the way. It's just, this is super bright. It's still bright. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a little better, but I don't like how much cooler that is. I don't mind brightness. There's way too much. And there's what it would look like in black and white. That's fun. It still looks like this in person. It's still bright. But I think I'm done. I don't want to do anything else to it. I like it. I'll probably put a flood coat over it of resin and uh, be done with it. I, I really like it. Sign it. Let's see here. Get you guys in on this. I really don't care, but <laughs> I really like this piece, so I'm glad you uh, hung out and watched me paint it.
So there you go. I love it. Y'all have an awesome night or an awesome morning, depending on where you're from. And uh, I will, guys, I will, guys, I will see you guys and gals on the next one. Thanks for showing up. Be kind to one another. You never know what somebody's going through. Um, Y'all have an amazing night. Bye.